Hey, John, and welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, James. That's a pleasure. Now, people can follow you on Twitter, I guess, when you have your Yankee fan or, you know, Yankee hat on um, at 90s uh, uh, Yanks Kid. And of course, when you have your podcast, uh, which we'll get into as well, uh, podcast uh, host or co-host hat on at Babes Babes Pod on Twitter. And then, of course, you know, no character size limits on Instagram, which is why we love it. Babes Babes Podcast. So, again, uh, follow those. So, again, a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks again for having me. Okay, so um, you're a producer and co-host with um, Kelsey and, and Madison on the Babes Babes podcast. So uh, let's give us a little background on it, like how the three of you come together, how do you come up with it, even how do you come up with the name? What's the whole story? Yeah, so um, I mean, I've been a Yankee fan my whole life, die hard. Um, I've always been really interested in baseball, a huge enthusiast, um, although just in the last couple of years, I've really gotten into baseball all across the board. Um, so I don't know if that was like a post panda or like a, a thing that happened in the pandemic, but, um, I just decided like, why not start a podcast? Like, this is what I love. I watch every game. Um, so I decided that I would just like launch it. Um, and I basically did a cold call on Twitter with a couple of other girls that I had been, um, just interacting with a little bit just as a baseball fan. Um, Kelsey actually has her own podcast called Peace, Love, and Baseball. And so I was listening to her on there. She's a St. Louis Cardinals fan. And I was like, wow, she's really impressive. Like, she's just, she's so good and just, she's captivating. So I thought, oh, why not reach out to her? Um, and obviously, if you're a Yankee fan and you're active on Yankee social media, then you probably know Madison. So I thought she would be also perfect for the gig and um i was lucky enough that both of them were like yeah sure um and so we didn't know each other when we started just like over social media um so we are now six episodes in and we're getting to know each other really well at this point yeah this is cool on the fly like that and uh i so you have some interesting guests uh, for may because maybe just give a little preview of what you have scheduled yeah so coming up later in may we have um Shane Obadzinski, who played um, Tommy Timmons on The Sandlot. Mm -hmm. um, so if you'll remember, like the brothers, Timmy and Tommy, Tommy was the little brother that would like repeat everything that he said. So like he'd be like, the class is a clout, the class is a clout. Mm -hmm. So he's the little brother. He's going to be on um, May. Let's see. I think May 22nd is when we'll actually um, release the episode. And then following that, um, a fellow Yank fan, um, Jason Klein, who is an author, he wrote a children's book called um, Yes, Pepper, Girls Can Play Baseball Too. Um, and so he wrote the book. It was inspired by his daughter. And um, she had approached her parents, I think, when she was eight years old. And she asked them if she could be if she could play baseball and uh, obviously the parents wanted to encourage her to do whatever she wants. Um, so he decided to write a book about it and he's been featured on MLB network, um, the yes network and a few others. So he'll be on and yeah, I can't wait to have both of them. Yeah, that's a cool, that's a cool combo there. And, uh, with the Sandlot to me, I, I think I got to put that in the top five baseball movies ever though. I'll go natural. Number one, bull Durham field of dreams, I guess it's a little old, but the pride of the Yankees with Lou Gehrig. And then, I don't know, Sandlot's got to be in there. I don't know what other. Yeah. I, mean, that, I think, I mean, a... I grew up in the 90s and, like, I was born, like, just on the cusp of, like, so the last day of 88. So, basically, I don't know any of the 80s. I was basically just raised in the 90s. So, 93, the Sandlot gets released. I think I'm, like, four years old. And it's just been like such a special movie in my life. I've always loved it and it's inspired me um, and my love for baseball. So yeah, it's like a dream come true to have a cast member come on. And this happens to be their 30th anniversary this year. Hmm. Actually, I actually remember my first time. So it was one of those movies I was happy to see it in a theater. This, you know, um, this, this is a certain movie that just like, like Jurassic Park and just like I've seen it in theaters. I was happy to see it. Sandlot's one of them. Just this is an amazing film. And um, this happened yourself, though. Do you remember when you when you first saw the movie? 
I don't remember if we saw it in theaters. I don't think we did. Um, but I know we got it for Christmas, like as a gift on VHS from our grandparents. And I think like ever after that, just watched it nonstop. Now, as for the name of the podcast, Babes, Babes podcast. Now you have two Yankee fans and a Cardinal fan. Was it like a vote? Like, how'd you come up with the name of the podcast? <laughs> I, I mean, I had like all the branding picked out already when I reached out to them. Although I did like give them the option to, you know, weigh in whether the, like they weren't cool with that. But both of them loved it. So we just went with it. Um, it. And- so obviously inspired by Babe Ruth. Yeah, that was a good good plan. Now, any consideration, because, um, you know, obviously Roger Maris, after he left the Yankees, went to the Cardinals for a few years. Any consideration to go a little middle ground, maybe Roger Maris's Babes podcast? Ooh, I like that. Um, we might have to incorporate something there. Um, yeah. Although, no, like, I didn't know that Kelsey was going to be a co-host when I picked all of the branding and, and figured it all out. So didn't um, consider that at the time. Ah, uh, babe's more exciting anyway. So, um, <laughs> for yourself, uh, you're a Yankee B writer for Jersey Sporty News. So, um, how often do you um, you know, write articles? Um, so oh, I've been what I've been doing this year is just kind of writing a series recap. So I just I just put out like two articles a week, and I just do a recap after every series. Gotcha. So, but they're getting a little ahead of me. I've I've I'm I have my hands in like too many things right now. <laughs> gotcha. All right, so. Speaking about you know current Yankees, uh, we look at this team right now in last place. Obviously, I don't think they are a last place team, but we've seen Tampa get off this great start. I mean, do you think the Yankees really have any shot to catch catch up to them and maybe get the ALEs crown? Or is this going to be a situation where they're fighting for those wild card spots? You know, come late September. Yeah, I mean, realistically, I think we're probably looking at a wild card at this point. Um, I just don't see the Rays like going on any bad runs at this point like they have just been so solid I kept thinking um in April that they would um maybe have like a bad series but that really hasn't happened so um I don't know optimistically I would love to think that we could catch them at this point though I think we better just like go for the wild card yeah, they're feeling the same way. And plus, you know, like a year, even a year or two ago, you could always count on some like easy wins, maybe against like the Red Sox, Baltimore Orioles. I mean, Red Sox, I don't think they're that great. They're probably really a fourth place peak, but the Orioles are no joke anymore. Toronto's good, even though they've been slumping a little bit. And of course, Tampa's good. So now, you know, the Yankees not going to get any easy wins against, you know, someone like Baltimore. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, even the Twins, right? Like they're, they're holding out strong this year. So even when we face like other AL teams outside of our division, um, not an easy win. All right. So, and before the season started, Cashman signed a four year extension. Now, let's just say for some reason the Yankees don't make the playoffs at all, not even a wild card. And obviously, fans are going to want, you know, blood. They're going to want someone to hide for that. Now, Cashman would have three years left on his deal. You think any possibility just to, you know, satisfy the fans that Howe would cut finally ties with Cashman, but with still three years left on a deal? No. I, th- I don't think there's any way that they would do that just because historically, I don't know. There's just such a thick relationship there with Hal and I just don't see them like, or with Hal and cash. I just don't see them cutting him off possibly if like next year were to go bad too. So then he's halfway through the four year deal. But, um, but but I know a a lot of people are going to be, would be calling for his job. And I mean, I would be one of them probably, but I don't see it. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with the same thing. This course, like, um, you know, you're not going to pay someone like another three years to sit at home. Like, yeah, I would think it would take this, a situation of they they probably can boom just to, like satisfy just to just to respond, and then and then 2024 Cashman will be like, all right, you got about half a season to make something good here, or now you know with with an, at least a second year, and then I could see him possibly finally cutting ties. But I totally agree with you. Just the fact he was kind of operating team. During the last offseason when he wasn't even on the contract yet, this kind of, like I said, speaks volumes of the the, the Hal and Cashman relationship. Yeah, totally. So, so we saw Hicks, you know, take a little baby steps. He gets that double in the final Tampa game, which is like, wow. And then, of course, the first game against Oakland hits a home run, shockingly. Now, do you think there's any possibility that Hicks can kind of put together some sort of decent sort of season here? You know, maybe he's getting a little healthy or is it just, you know, that's just a, a lucky two games and this guy's just, you know, he's lost. My fear is that, and I think a lot of people are with me on this. I think that like that just secured his spot here 
Um, and then he'll go back to like not performing. That's my, my feeling. That's my gut feeling. But I mean, I would love to see the guy turn it around and I really do wish fans would back off a little bit. Um, I don't know how you can expect a guy to perform who just continuously gets booed. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm frustrated with the guy too, but like, don't we want him to succeed if he's going to be sticking around for a while? No, I, 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 Totally agree with you. Like, like, I don't think you should boo like ho- like home play home players. Like, even when they stood back in the day, when they said boo a rod. It's like, how's this going to help the guy? You know, like yeah. up there, like you know, on eggshells at every at bat. It doesn't help. And like, yeah, I just think that you kind of quietly just turn your head down and it's like uh, let the guy walk off. But but I understand fans' frustration with them. I just, of course, you know, to go a whole month without an extra base hit. It's like, come on. Yeah. No. And 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 it's a sore spot like with the with the organization too because it's like why are we letting like Peraza go back to um Scranton and you know this guy deserves a chance and then you've got Hicks and you're just like hanging on to him and he's got nothing left to give but um I don't know I really was happy for the guy last night and I hope he can turn it around yeah, room for I thought I thought honestly with the season start, he would have a great season because he's someone like no no pressure on him. You could almost bat him like in the ninth hole, and you know we've seen him have power. He gets on base and like I thought he could almost have like a resurrection type career uh, season. But again, so far no, that's not really the case. Yeah, yeah, and I mean coming off like injury last year, I thought okay maybe you know because he had a really rough ending to the season last year. Um, and yeah, so I thought like, hey, maybe this year he'll turn it around, but it just seems like he's just going the opposite direction. So now another Yankee I'm kind of concerned with, of course, again, he's going to be here for a couple more seasons is DJ LeMayu. Um, again, he hasn't been the same player that, you know, the first two seasons as a Yankee where he was like hitting over 300, almost an MVP type candidate. Um, I mean, maybe they, if the foot's getting better, I mean, any possibility, uh, you know, DJ could be that player again, or is this going to kind of be this like, 250 260 hitting type of dj i mean i'm afraid he's probably not gonna be the dj he was when he first came here um i mean he's getting older how old is he now like what is he 33 or 34 about yeah it's probably about 33 um and so but hey i like i like what i'm seeing from him this year so far um he's been a really good leader on the field when we haven't had judge um, so he does bring that with him and that's been huge and just his ability to move around. Um, I love that. Yeah, same thing. It's good, good versatility. And again, you're not really asking him to hit a home run to just be a slap hitter, but yeah, it's just, but, but, but I remember he was just so lethal again, a couple of seasons ago, just going to, going to right field, opposite field again, hitting like 320 stuff like that. And, um, I think that's also affected, you know, judge a little bit as well. I think when DJ is going good, judge is going good, but you know, I think when DJ f- Flip, uh, f- fault a little bit. Well, you know, then they, they could pitch around Judge because you know they don't have to worry about DJ being on, on the the base pads in front of them. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So we started the season obviously with uh, Anthony Volpe. Uh, obviously, he had a great spring training. The fans want him on the op- opening day roster. Now, a- April he kind of struggled, but last week of April he kind of picked it up a little bit and been decent in early May. Now, what's your assessment? Do you think the Yankee organization maybe jumped the gun with him with him a little bit? Maybe should have started with him AAA or were you happy and think the decision, you know, to have him in the majors this soon it was the right call? I think it was the right call and I'm happy that he's here. Um I like what I'm seeing from him so far. He obviously had a little bit of a rough start too, but that's to be expected. Um, I think giving him the chance to play it short all year long, like come postseason, he's going to be comfortable. Um, he'll be confident. So I'm glad he's he's there all season. Um, and, you know, like the Yankees just have the tendency to leave guys down in AAA for way too long. Um, so I, I'm glad they're not doing that with him. I agree. And I was like, wait, let him go to take his lumps now. And I like the element of you know, bringing the stolen base to the to lead off position for the Yankees, which they haven't had like since like Henderson in the eighties, really. Right. Um, exactly. And he, I don't know, like if, if you can give him the hat tip on this, but it seems like everyone else is being a lot more aggressive on the base paths too. Um, so I like that. Uh, Glaber's stealing bases. Um, I don't know. It's fun. It's fun to see them like, 
actually stealing it, like judge stealing a base when we're up five, nothing. Um, <laughs> Probably not the best position to do it, but yeah, I like the, the yeah. I think a lot of it's do it also with the, uh, obviously the limited amount of pitches can uh, throw over to the bag. So I just think players are timing pitches better and they kind of just running off the hills. And yeah, it's just good to see it. The Yankees have a new element, especially like, yeah, like I said, Gleyber Torres. So you don't even think of him as a speedster. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I was thinking about like, I've never really cared for that ghost runner rule, but this year I'm like, eh, like, like I don't mind it. Cause it's kind of working toward our, or it could potentially work to our advantage where we have, better base running happening right now yeah i mean i, I i'm okay with it as long as again I, I wouldn't i wouldn't want it in the playoffs but again just kind of get the regular season especially the way now these games are much shorter and and now with the ghost runner you, you know you're not gonna get these you know 16 inning marathons like we used to get back in the day yeah yeah so and another yank again obviously the reason the play, last play is a lot of players struggling but it's been clay holmes who kind of got off decently but of course been faulting lately i mean you can't even like Trust the guy. Do you think he lost his closer role, or you think this, um, you know, Boone's is kind of putting some different guys in just to see what you know, kind of auditioning different options? Yeah, I mean, I think they're they're just trying out different things. But so far, what I've seen from him, I like him when he comes in in the seventh or eighth inning. Um, I think he's more calm and collected, and he just seems to do better in that spot. He's not a closer. Um, I sh- he doesn't do well under pressure. And yeah, so I like King in that closer spot. Um, but yeah, here in the last few games when they've put him in around the seventh or eighth inning, he hasn't been too bad. So yeah, they pick it up a little bit, but I think ideally they would like to get him back to that Clay Holmes we saw at least the first half of last season when he had ERA like zero point nine and yeah. you know this throwing that sinker ball and having people just beat the ball into the ground. So you know, other than that, if that's not the case, that guy's not coming back, then they're going to have to make some sort of move to trade deadline. Because I like King too, but I like King in that seventh and eighth inning spots of going two innings and kind of be like the Mariano of 96 and then having a de facto ninth inning person going there clean. Um, yeah. That's you know, yeah. I, yeah, that's the way I would ideally like it. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So we're going to wait on Stan Again, probably not looking at least June until we see um, Gio call Stanton back. Now, obviously, we you know is history of leg injuries um now he always hits better when he's playing in the field but you think the yankees risk giving him like three or four uh starts in the outfield when he gets back or you think he's just 100 percent dh because hey look we can't this, this guy you can't trust this guy's legs to stay healthy i th- thought in the beginning they were coming out a little too strong with how many days they were playing him in the outfield so maybe if they just back that off a little bit where he's playing every few games um, in the outfield and, and then DHing in between. I think I like that for him. Yeah. Cause I think going yeah, into the like, season, they were talking about right. judge, yeah, judge playing left Bader and center and, and Stan and right. I think and they have the druthers. So I think come playoff time, you'll see that, but maybe, like I said, I agree with you, maybe just one or two starts a week. That's it. You know, in the yeah. outfield. Yeah. I mean, then the tough thing is judge will have not played left field all year. So it's like, I don't know if he slides over there easily or or what. Yeah, I think he can handle them. I'd always say like, you know, left field, the Yankee Stadium, you need a center field. And well, judge, even though I, I was against it last season, but hey, look, he proved me wrong, hit 62 home runs uh, and stayed healthy. So I think if he could handle center field, Yankee Stadium, I think he could handle left. So I don't think it'd be bad for him. It's just a matter of Stanton just not getting hurt. Yeah, right. And how good has been the local guy, Harrison Beatty. You see him come in here, instantly have an impact in the Tampa series. And he was really the only player for the Yankees that had any sign of life during last season playoffs. So this, what are, what are you feeling about Harrison Bader? Look, this is my, like, I told you so moment, and I am loving every minute of it. Um, two weeks ago, I put out a tweet, and I was just like, I cannot wait for Bader to get back. Like, you can't get back soon enough. And, oh, my gosh, people just ate me alive on that tweet. Like, no, that's not going to make a difference. Um, and I'm like, I'm looking at more than just this fielding, like, obviously like fielding alone we desperately needed him back um and but like his bat too which really came alive last postseason when no everyone else's was dead so I was like there's there are those two aspects for me but like more than anything his vibes I feel like he just brings like really good energy to the dugout and sure enough so far like fingers crossed but he has just been bringing it, um, and I love it. And the guys are, like, totally feeding off of it. 
Uh, I, I like everything about him. I like when he's on the, the stealing bases. I like even as like his turquoise blue glove. He yeah. almost reminds me of a little bit of a Nick Swisher. You know, like Nick Swisher. He I guess does. He's, rubs, he's probably not as vocal as Nick Swisher. I think Nick Swisher like rubs some people the wrong way a little bit because he wasn't like Yankee-ish. But Beta does it, in, I think, a little more of a way that people were more accepting. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, but yeah, he does have that like Nick Swisher in the clubhouse giving off the vibes, like kind of the life of the party. Gotcha. So. Sure. So hopefully, you know, him and then the fact now Judge is returning from the IL just kind of, you know, gives the team a, a little boost with their need. And again, DJ's been hitting a little bit better, Glabar hitting a little bit better. So finally, hopefully, um, you know, this team will start scoring runs, but then and climb up that AL East uh, little ladder. Yeah. Yeah. I got my um, Judge shirt. I have a Judge shirt on tonight. Have to for his return. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he was kind of in a slump a little bit right before his um, injury. So hopefully that gave him time to recover from that, too. And. Yeah, hit the ground running. I mean, I'm sure it's painful for the guy to like stand in the dugout feeling just fine. And I read um, in an interview with um, that, or maybe Brian Hoke wrote this, um, that he had said like half the time he was on the aisle, he felt completely fine. So I'm sure like standing in the dugout, just watching some of those brutal games that happened, that had to have been like the most painful thing of all. So hopefully he's back and mental game too yeah because like when they made the decision i remember he took batting practice he was like the third group up and he took some swings like again he probably didn't have to but i guess maybe we want to side with caution at least this early in the season and have something that's gonna linger on so you know i think the yankees were the storm best they could and even the tampa series all right they lost two out of three but they kind of have a ragtag lineup and really should have almost could have possibly won all three games so yeah. i think take a little good solace from that yeah totally i was um pretty encouraged by what that what I saw during the Tampa series, even though we couldn't pull it out the with Cole on Sunday, but um, I was encouraged. I thought the guys were really starting, and obviously Bader was back, so that helped. Um, but yeah. Okay, so I figure since you know your '90s uh, Yanks kid, we'll get into the, <laughs> we'll go we'll go back in time a bit. So I'm gonna gotta ask you a couple. Of, I guess not really trivia, but maybe a yes no questions. Or I'll take your poll on a certain you know. So we'll go we'll go a little late '90s, early 2000s, but kind of the the to- I guess we'll call it the Tory Dynasty. So okay. So the first question I want to throw at you. So you got a big must win game, game seven, last game of the year. Who are you gonna go with, Andy Pettit or El Duque? Pettit. Go with Pettit. I would just. I, I do I, love El Duque though, and his um his big leg kick. <laughs> yeah, probably in that case, I'd think more as much as I love Andy Pettit, I'd probably just do El Duque because I don't think we see El Duque really, like we've seen Pettit lose some of the big games, unfortunately, because because he was here much longer than El Duque. But El Duque never really lost any of the like the big must win games. So again, I you can't really go either way, but I'd probably would decide El Duque just because he always came through. And I always think of them. I guess it was the uh, 1998 series against Cleveland where we're, we're down two games to one. And he kind of wins that, you know, ties the series up to uh, two, two. And that, I mean, obviously the Yankees lose that, you know, the, 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 the magical 98 season is completely lost. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's a good point. Um, I try to remember back as far as I can, as, as best as I can, but yeah. Okay. So I, now I'm going to switch. I felt a little like bit. I had to go with Andy. Yeah, either way is wrong, not wrong. So I'm going to go a little few years before that. Obviously, 96, the Yankees win their, their first championship, first time in like, you know, for, or the, like since the late 70s now. Obviously, that season was, um, you know, we have Tino and Martino's there, there at first base. Now, he had a great, you know, good regular season, but he didn't really do much in the playoffs. Now, let's just say if somehow, some way, Don Mattingly was on the 96 Yankees, you'd think they win the World Series that year? Yeah. Yeah, I do they'd want to go out on that note. Like I just, I think, and obviously he was captain. Um, Might have been there, but it would have been great to see G to, you know, at shortstop throwing to Madden and get it out there. But unfortunately that's not probably something we never got to see. So got a little trade proposal for you here. Of course, we know the Yankees <laughs> beat the Mets in the 2000 world series, but would you will be willing to trade losing to the Mets in 2000, but you get two things in return. You get to win the 2001 World Series, and you don't get the 3-0 choke against Boston in 2004. Would you be willing to trade losing to the Mets to get rid of those latter two? I would, and I don't know. Maybe that makes me not a good fan, but there is nothing more painful in my life to think back on than that 2004 um, comeback loss to the Red Sox. Like, it's 
very painful. Um, the 2001 world series would have been amazing too. Like, obviously there was so much writing on that year, um, with nine 11, like, so that's storybook right there. If we could have come away with that one. Yeah. I always say, um, I always say to other guests as well. My two favorite world series of that whole run was 96, the first one and 2001, even though they lost it. Uh, just those two games with, you know, the Tino home run, the brocious home run, the Mr. November, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Even those three games in the Yankee Stadium were just so amazing that, you know, you know obviously the, the Mariano obviously losing games, you know, getting knocked around hurt a little bit. But I think those th- those three was just so amazing. It's almost like eh, you don't mind even losing that one because, hey, look, they won three before that and four out of six. So it's not, you know, it's not like they have no championships. Right. Yeah. And it was like the one thing that they say, like, brought the city back together um giving everybody like the one goal to look forward to that you know right after that that all happened so yeah i would totally do okay. that so i got two more for you before we head to the the elevators at the yankee stadium go downstairs and leave the stadium there so get a, a little uh jeter related so what was the bigger jeter moment to you the jeffrey mayer catch in the 96 playoffs or jeter's last at bat at yankee stadium getting a game-winning hit to c- kind of give a sign off to the fans to me, it was his walk off um, and his last at bat that because probably because that's what I like remember the most, you know, um, a little bit older when that happened. And again, like storybook stuff right there, you couldn't have written a better ending to his. Well, you could have. Um, but that was just an electric moment. And I think like anyone who saw that will never forget it. The crazy part about the game, if you remember, the Yankees had a good lead, and David Robinson, who again, he was a decent closer for the Yankees, you know, after Mariano left, he blows mm-hmm. the game. I think he gave like a three-run home run, so it's almost like this was just meant to be, like you, because otherwise, like that was you know, just set up perfectly. It's like almost like did he do this on purpose? Because the Yankees obviously were out of the playoff hunt that year, so had nothing, to, you know, yeah. they didn't need to win the game. So I don't think David Robinson blew the game on purpose, but yeah, it was just all but set like, up. Like you knew that was his last game, like that was it. Yeah. So yeah, Incredible. it all worked out. So last but not least, we'll get into a few Yankee managers. Of course, um, you know, we have Aaron Boone, who in um, when he was a Yankee player, hits the, the game, uh, you know, walk-off home run against the, the Red Sox in 2003. You have that moment versus Joe Girardi, 96, hitting that triple off of Greg Maddox in game six, there, which essentially put the game away. What do you think was the bigger moment, the, the Girardi triple 96 or the Boone walk-off in 2003? Mm, I think probably the most talked about is the Boone walk-off. Um the 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 curse of the Boone Bino. I think as well, just because I think that that ninety six Yankee team was going to win regardless. So you know, again, it was disappointing we lost to the Marlins, but at least we had that boom moment. So John, yeah. I appreciate this time with you again. Uh, please, people should check out the Babes Babes podcast again. Follow you on Twitter at nineties Yanks Kid, as well as follow your, your podcast um, on Twitter at Babes Babes Pod. Um, and of course on Instagram as well as babes, babes podcast. So best of luck, um, on the podcast and everything. I'm sure you can do a great job and hopefully these Yankees can, you know, start bouncing back a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Go Yanks.